hi guys uh, so this video is all about scaling your application up to million users so let's say in the legacy application right so you have one web application and you have deployed the code in the server right and the user will request your application and your application will send the request to the server and then the server might go to the database and give the response back to the uh, user right so this is how generally it looks right at high level so it's very basic but if your application is a small scale application right so this design is uh, more than enough right so there is nothing wrong in this design right so it will work well if you have a less data if your traffic is less right there is nothing wrong but now the issue starts when the traffic is too much right so let's say your lot of users are hitting your application at the same time right so then you have to do something at the server level at the database level at the architecture of the application level right so you have to do all that things so now let's say we want to scale this application right so the traffic started coming to your application now you want to scale right so the first step as a developer will be to do the vertical scaling right so what i mean by vertical scaling is so you need to do vertical scaling vertical scaling means like if your server was let's say 16 gb ram right uh, now you want to increase to 32 GB. Now you want to increase to 65 GB, right? That means you are not increasing the number of machines, but you are increasing the configuration of your server. So it will look a little bit like this, right? So you increase the server size. Now user will send the request. Now your server is able to handle more requests because you increased the RAM and configuration of your server, right? Traffic is now doubled, right? So now in vertical scaling, there is some limit, right? How much RAM you will keep adding, right? It's also not optimal to keep only one server, right? What if this server failed? or if server have some uh, disaster, right? And if server got some issues, right? Then your whole application will be down. So the next step comes is to do horizontal scaling. So now I will do vertical scaling plus horizontal scaling. So something like this, right? So what I will do instead of one big server, I will maybe have four small servers or I will have four big servers, or maybe I will keep adding based on the traffic, right? So now I have multiple servers here, right? When the user will call our application, right? There have to something in between, right? So we call it as a load balancer layer, right? So what I will do, I will have here load balancer, right? And what is the purpose of load balancer is to send the request to any one of the server based on different algorithms. So there are different algorithms of load balancer available. Based on the load balancer algorithm, either request will go here either it will go uh, to any one of the server right here or this server or this server right and then we have database this is how it will look so now our system design is getting improved right so basically now we have added more than one server and now we have added load balancer and load balancer will work on some algorithms so so we will not discuss about algorithms in detail but at high level right uh, we have first thing is the round robin right so first request goes to first server, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth request goes here, sixth here, seventh here, eighth here, right? So one of the algorithm, which is simpler one, which is round robin, right? And the second one, which is commonly used is least connection. So that means, let's say this server have 10 active connection, this have 100, this have five, right? And this have 50. So the with the least connection is this server, right? So load balancer will see which server have the least active connection and will send the request to that server, right? And also these both can be combined with the weighted or also weight also server weight so what does this weight means the configuration of your server so in this case all the servers are equal so it's okay right but sometimes let's say one server will be double the size of this server right so what does that mean is this server will should able to handle double request in this server so that also is one of the way of doing it and the other one is ip hash so ip hash is mostly used for online gaming because they don't want to spoil your uh, user experience right so what what will happen this user is coming from some ip right so load balancer send the user one request to server one right so next time when user one comes from same ip the request will go to the same server so you would have seen the gaming uh, thing right when it got disconnected it immediately get connected right so that's why the ip hash comes so again we will not go too deep into this but these are the high level knowledge you should have about load balancer algorithm right so now what is the next step right so the next step is to do the same as at database level right because 
now the traffic is more right now the traffic is more more requests are going to database right so same thing we will do for the database also set of application directly calling the database right so again we need something in between right again we need a load balancer for the application and database layer right so here also we can add load balancer right and then here we will add the database layer so which will look something like this right so load balancer and then load balancer will send request to any of the database uh, again it also can have the algorithms also same the way we discussed above so now if you see something the design will look like this and also database when you do horizontal scaling right you different things comes into picture like a uh, database sharding concept right is there and a replication come into picture right so again we will not go deep into this sharding and replication but here if you see let's say we have three databases right so one can be a leader database and other can be followers or we also call as master or slave right so whatever write operation will happen it will happen on master or leader and then the data replication happens uh, between them something like this so it will look like this all the write operation go here and then it get replicated and again replication can be asynchronous also and synchronous also so i will make separate video on sharding and replication now if you see now we have more than one server at the application level more than one server at a database level and then we have load balancer in between right so now the next step to improve this design is like instead of every time doing the database call we can use the caching mechanism right so if i go here right and i will just reduce the size a little bit so what i will do here is so instead of this application making directly call to database right load balancer first i will check here right cache right it can be like a redis so i will check if this data which i am looking for right is present in cache or redis or not right if it's present then the response will go from here if not present then we call the database load balancer and then the load balancer will give the response to the server right so mostly it will look like this or i will just say uh, data present right then give the response back then data not present right so this is looking good so now here one challenge is there how you will maintain the cache with the database right so let's say some write operation happened right here now you have to put that record in the cache also right so basically the database and cache should always be in sync right so for that we can use kafka redis uh, connectors okay so again we will not go deep into this concept but with the help of this right kafka like event driven messaging they have some connectors whenever any update will happen in the database right uh, the connector will update the data in the cache and once it is updated in cache the updated data will be serviced out to consumers right so this is the extra step we have to do when we introduce caching in our mechanism to sync the data between database right and cache system so this is now how it looks right with caching now if we go next level deep right what we can do we can introduce cdn here right so cdn will be for the static files right when you call the web application there are a lot of html css javascript files right which can be fetched from cdn instead of directly going to the server and then we can fetch the data from cache and then we can give the response to the user so so this is how it looks right now so now let's say we divide our application architecture to microservices right so for each microservice right here we should have the similar architecture so it will look like this so let's say cdn is at the web application level i will remove that but let's say now this whole architecture is for each microservice so let's say this is your first microservice which you call it as a let's say uh, get users right and then in a similar way you will have other microservice right you can call it as get accounts right or get products each of the microservice should have its own architecture like this so if you have 100 of microservices right the architecture looks like this every microservice is loosely coupled from each other and it have its own 
servers have its own infrastructure have its own caching have its own database everything should be loosely coupled right so imagine if you have hundreds thousands of microservices how big your system is right uh, so i will just remove this this is just to, for the explanation and also for the intercommunication right so sometimes microservices have to communicate with each other right so if they are doing it synchronously right so they can use like in spring boot we use like uh, eureka right uh, we use eureka netflix discovery right service discovery but if it's asynchronous right so for example we don't need the data or anything on the fly i want to send some logs to my logging service right so let's say i have one logging service here right which all the microservices will send uh, the data right and this logging service let's say is uh, connected to some dashboards right so it can be let's say grafana right so we are using grafana and prometheus so all the services can send the events right to this logging services which will be asynchronous and based on this you can view the metrics on grafana or manage uh, incidents right service now is there so all that stuff you can do right based on this and then these asynchronous thing again we can do via kafka right so we will again not go deep into kafka but this service will have like kafka consumer right so which will keep listening on some kafka topic and then kafka producers will send the uh, events to the kafka consumer and then we will have all the logic here and once we do the logic here it will do like uh, reporting management incident management email trigger all that things we can handle here so this is how it will look right and we use kafka for event driven uh, architecture and now the last thing is like we need to we need to take care of the disaster also right so that's why when we deploy anything on the servers right maybe we need more than one region so if i will copy this right uh, so for each microservice they might have different regions because let's say this region is for get users let's say us region right and inside us also they can have different just for this example just to show you uh, the concept of disaster recovery right and also they have different regions based on the market level so let's say it is india region right and now let's say this is required because let's say in us region if there is some earthquake fire any natural disaster then this architecture will go down but still this region will be upright so this is one of the benefit other benefit is this is a uh, india user right so india user request will go to india region because it will be faster right and the us region request will go to us region right so that's why big companies have lot of data centers so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content